2 Samuel chapter 16. When David was a little past the top of the mountain, there was Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, who met him with a couple of saddled donkeys, and on them 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisins, 100 summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, What do you mean to do with these? So Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and wine for those who are faint in the wilderness to drink. Then the king said, And where is your master's son? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is staying in Jerusalem. For he said, Today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to me. So the king said to Ziba, Hear, all that belongs to Mephibosheth is yours. And Ziba said, I humbly bow before you, that I may find favor in your sight, my lord, O king. Now when King David came to Berum, there was a man from the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shami, the son of Gera, coming from there. He came out cursing continually as he came. And he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and his left. Also Shami said thus when he cursed, Come out, come out, you bloodthirsty man, you rogue. The Lord has brought upon you all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom your son. So now you are caught in your own evil, because you are a bloodthirsty man. Then Abisha, the son of Zeruah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Please let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruah? So let him curse, because the Lord has said to him, Curse David. Who then shall say, Why have you done so? And David said to Abisha and all his servants, See how my son who came from my own body seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjaminite? Let him alone and let him curse, for so the Lord has ordered him. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went along the road, Shami went along the hillside opposite him and cursed as he went, throwing stones at him and kicking up dust. Now the king and all the people who were with him became wary, and they refreshed themselves there. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel was with him. And so it was when Hushua, the archite, David's friend, came to Absalom, that Hushua said to Absalom, Long live the king, long live the king. So Absalom said to Hushua, Is this your loyalty to your friend? Why did you not go with your friend? And Hushua said to Absalom, No, but whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel choose, his I will be, and with him I will remain. Furthermore, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son as I have served in your father's presence? So will I be in your presence. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give advice as to what we should do. And Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go into your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you are abhorred by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the top of the house, and Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Now the advice of Ahithophel, which he gave in those days, was as if one had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the advice of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom.